好，各位晚安。傍傍晚前，我们先来做一段测试性质的 The Catcher in the r i g h t 感进度。那之前昨天啦，哦，我用了付费版的屏幕摄影程式，结果录出来状况听说不是很好。同学反映说，好像声音怪怪的，然后又说我烧香，我确实应该不是烧香啦，应该是我昨天下午两点多的时候去当抗日英雄哦。在大太阳底下跑步，自己锻炼一下体力，跑了快一万公尺，<笑>回来有点虚弱，所以声音可能听起来有点烧香。那为了避免状况再次发生，我做了一点点改变哦，我用了一个比较便宜两百五十块的麦克风，我这样放在这边，再试一试看看好不好？那因为 The Catch in the Rain 要赶进度了，所以我先用朗读的方式。先朗读看看啊，因为时间比较短，很容易测试，看状况好不好。那我也会搭配原来的版本，免付费的那个软体版本，互相搭配转换测试，看到底差别在哪里。我自己找找看。好，那我就直接开始念。我们之前到了119页，我们从120页开始哦，这就是广读。哦，广读速度确实很快。好，从 Are you do 这边开始，那我就直接开始念，看看能不能念个三页到四页。我把它移过来。好，先润喉一下哦，你的待待会又破声了。<咳>好，开始了。All you do is hold your hand under your mouth and blow your breath up. Toward the old nostrils, it didn't seem to stink much, but I brushed my teeth anyway. Then I put on another clean shirt. I knew I didn't have to get all dolled up for a prostitute or anything, but it sort of gave me something to do. I was a little nervous. I was starting to feel pretty sexy and all, but I was a little nervous anyway. If you want to know the truth, I'm a virgin. I really am. I've had quite a few opportunities to lose my virginity and all, but I've never got around to it yet. Something always happens. For instance, if you're at a girl's house, her parents always come home at the wrong time, or you're afraid they will. Or if you're in the back seat of somebody's car, there's always somebody's date in the front seat. Some girl, I mean. That always wants to know what's going on all over the whole goddamn car. I mean, some girl in front keeps turning around to see what the hell's going on. Anyway, something always happens. I came quite close to doing it a couple of times, though. One time in particular, I remember something went wrong. Though, I don't even remember what anymore. The thing is, most of the time, when you're coming pretty close to doing it with a girl, a girl that isn't a prostitute or something, or anything, I mean, she keeps telling you to stop. The trouble with me is, I stop. <laughs> most guys don't. I can't help it. You never know whether they really want you to stop, or whether they're just scared as hell. Or whether they're just telling you to stop, so that if you do go through with it, the blame will be on you, not them. Anyway, I keep stopping. The trouble is, I get to feeling sorry for them. I mean, most girls are so dumb and all. After you nag them for a while, you can really watch them losing their brains. You take a girl when she really gets passionate. She just hasn't any brains. I don't know. They tell me to stop, so I stop. I always wish I hadn't. After I take them home, but I keep doing it anyway. Anyway, while I was putting on another clean shirt, I sort of figured this was my big chance in a way. I figured if she was a prostitute and all. I could get in some practice on her in case I ever get married or anything. 
I worry about that stuff sometimes. I read this book once at the Hutton School. They had this very sophisticated, suave, sexy guy in it. Monsieur Blanchard. As his name, was his name. I can still remember. It was a lousy book, but this Blanchard guy was pretty good. He had his big shadow in all down the Riviera in Europe. And all he did in his spare time was beat women off with a club. He was a real rake and all, but he knocked women out. He said in this one part that a woman's body is like a violin and all, and that it takes a terrific musician to play it right. It was a very corny book. I realized that, but I couldn't get that violin stuff out of my mind anyway. In a way. That's what I sort of wanted to get some practice in, in case in case I ever get married. Coffee and his magic violin, boy, <laughs> it's corny. I re I realize, but it isn't too corny. I wouldn't mind being pretty good at that stuff half the time. If you really want to know the truth, when I'm horsing around with a girl, I have a hell of a lot of trouble just finding what I'm looking for. For God's sake. If you know what I mean, take this girl and I just must having sexual intercourse with that I told you about. It took me about an hour to just get her goddamn brazier off. By the time I did get it off, she was about ready to spit in my eye. Anyway, I kept walking around the room waiting for this prostitute to show up. I kept hoping she'd be good looking. It didn't care too much, though. I sort of just wanted to get it over with. Finally, somebody knocked down the door, and when I went to open it, I had my suitcase right in the way, and I fell over it and damn near broke my knee. I always pick a gorgeous time to fall over the suitcase or something. When I opened the door, this prostitute was standing there. She had a polo coat on and no hat. She was sort of a blonde, but you could tell she dyed her hair. She wasn't any old back, though. How do you do? I said, suave as hell, boy. You the guy Morris said. She asked me. She didn't seem too goddamn friendly. Is he the elevator boy? Yeah, she said. Yes, I am. Come in, won't you? I said. I was getting more and more nonchalant as it went along. It really was. She came in and took her coat off right away and sort of chucked it on the bed. She had on a green dress underneath. Then she sort of sat down sideways on a chair. They went with a desk in her room and started jiggling her foot up and down. She crossed her legs and started jiggling this one foot up and down. She was very nervous for a prostitute. She really was. I think it was because she was young as hell. She was around my age. I sat down in a big chair next to her and offered her a cigarette. I don't smoke, she said. She had a tiny little whiny, whiny voice. You could hardly hear her. She never said thank you either. When you offer her something, she just didn't know any better. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Jean Steele. I said, "You gotta watch out, yeah." She said she didn't care what the hell my name was. Naturally, hey, how old are you, anyways? Me, twenty-two. Like fun you are. It was a funny thing to say. It sounded like a real kid. You think a prostitute and all would say like hell you are or a cut of crap instead of like fun you are. <laughs> How old are you? I asked her. Old enough to know better, she said. She was really witty. You got to watch out, yeah? She asked me it again. And then she stood up and pulled her dress over her head. I certainly felt peculiar when she did that. I mean, she did it so sudden and all. I know you're supposed to feel pretty sexy when somebody gets up and pulls their dress over their head. 
but I didn't. Sexy was about the last thing I was feeling. I felt much more depressed than sexy. 好，一二三页，我看看念几页了。现在十分钟，我算一下，这蛮好玩的。一、二、三、四页吧。好，四页。应该是四页，我念了四页，因为是测试啊，所以我暂时不再多念。四页应该就够了，十分钟。那我就是测试一下付费版的荧幕摄影程式软体，跟加上250块的麦克风，看看效果怎么样。<笑>好，那饭前先，晚餐前先开胃一下，顺便测试。感谢同学，哦，后续我等我自己听一遍看看。状况好的话，我在啊、呃、交换的两个软体不同的方式来用，找出不同点到底在哪里。<笑>好，感谢同学哦、呃，同学也可以哦、呃、听听看状况有没有改善。好，晚安。